Um, I'm very happy to welcome Edward, Edward Thomason. He's back for another round at Zetonica. No, he's actually back because he's going to have a big performance on this weekend at the Nitros Museum on Saturday and Sunday. I think it's four times every day. Mm. One, two, three, four. If you want to be, if you want to make sure that you can see it, I got told you should email the museum. I think they sent out this email invitation, and you also can find it on the homepage. So just send them like a rupee at one o'clock on Saturday or Sunday or whatever, and then they make sure that you're on the list because it's quite a special setup. I got told. Yeah. Quite in a special kind of place, so it's not too miss. Um, back to Edward. Edward was already here for a week teaching uh, in October, it was, for all those of you who don't know him. Edward is an artist working mainly in performance, but also painting, drawing, as you can see. Um, he does very often uh, big performance pieces, usually accompanied by a video or a film, vice versa. So I think that's a very interesting um, interaction of those two medias. I guess you will talk about it, how do you see these two medias. Um, he is very successful with it. He has big shows. He has the Tate Britain, Tate Modern, I think even. No, not Tate no. Britain was. Anyway, it's all the same brand. <laughs> um, so in London, he had quite a big exposure. Maybe you've seen his work here in the Negros Museum. He also just did a big piece for that show. He usually works, or sometimes he works also in collaboration with Lucy Beach, a partner, and he did a quite some performance pieces also with her together, so he's not working just as a single artist, but also in collaboration with others, also very often with actors, as his performances are really more theatrical guided performances, so that's also very interesting. I think you're going to talk about all this. Yeah, so that's so literally my talk. <laughs> that was your talk. <laughs> so I go home now, <laughs> bye. Um, Thank you. Cool, okay. Um, so I probably will turn the lights off maybe or down yeah you can like i can dim it i actually find the lighting in this building quite complicated um yeah that's great yeah that's perfect so um i'm going to talk through some work from actually like maybe like the last um like seven years and um yeah, so let me gather myself. Um, yeah, so as Raf says, I work um, mainly with performance videos and drawing. And I guess really broadly speaking, the work is about people and how people are with each other um, and how they are in groups. And... I guess um, the central question has been for a long time how I might use a kind of theatrical setup with a performer and an audience as a way of thinking through relationships in everyday life and seeing how useful that kind of like this relationship is as a way of like thinking about other relationships that we have outside of the theatrical contact context um, and so, yeah, so I kind of, um, I use a lot of different ways to kind of develop the work, but they're all quite kind of straightforward, really. Um, I, uh, the practice is kind of, the foundation of the practice is in drawing and writing. And the writing is always very much for performance. So like when I'm writing, it's always with an eye for it being performed by someone else. And the drawings are always um, a way of me um, imagining situations, really, or sort of thinking about um, people in in um, in relation. So um, that's really like broadly what my work is kind of about and how it's formed. Um, but it gets more complicated than that. Um, so I'm going to. Uh, show you some pieces like I'm going to show you a video a couple of videos and some clips from performances and just kind of talk through that relationship really that relationship between performer and audience and how I've kind of understood it and continue to try and understand it um, so yeah when I, I uh, as Ralph said I work a lot with actors and and after the sort of independent work that I do 
with the writing and the drawing, I kind of bring what I've found to a group of actors and we rehearse it. And, and like my understanding of what a rehearsal is, I realise is very much um, kind of like cobbled together from my experience in like school plays and putting things on in my mum's living room and stuff. Like I don't have a kind of professional background in theatre, so what I call a rehearsal is like what I think is a rehearsal and I guess it probably looks like a rehearsal but I get quite self-conscious sometimes with when I'm working with professional actors because I'm like I don't know this is kind of like a rehearsal I think but like you know there's often kind of moments of translation that uh, need to take place so it's very much like my understanding of theatrical action is definitely cobbled together from a position of not knowing and kind of um, grabbing and kind of fandom as well I guess a bit um, I've always loved musical theatre, which is what I'm going to talk about now. So when I, um, I just, I'm rehearsing something for uh, this weekend. Um, one of my performers is here now. And, um, and one of the actors, I often work with actors again and again. But, uh, this work, I've got two new actress, actresses working with me. And one of them said, like, you know, she was sort of, like, doing the thing. And then she was like, so how did you uh, get into this? <laughs> and I was like... Um, I started thinking, uh, okay, um, you know, I, I was sort of like thinking back and I remembered that when I was at art school, when I first got to foundation, I, I kind of found it. Do you have foundation courses here? So like in England, you do a foundation course, which is a year where you kind of try everything out. So you do a bit of graphic design, you do a bit of painting, a bit of sculpture and, and you kind of then you specialize in the sort of like the second half of that year. And um, I just kind of started and I was doing some kind of quite like Peter Doig like paintings and like they were a bit shit. And then I did some quite sort of spooky uh, Rebecca Horn style sculptures, which were, I think, quite dynamic. But they weren't like, um, yeah, I, I just wasn't quite connecting to it. And then I went back to my mother's house and I, um, on the train back, I had uh, a recording of uh, like a, a original Broadway cast recording of Chorus Line, which is a musical about um, actors actually uh, uh, auditioning. And I was listening to it and um, something kind of like genuinely clicked in my head. I was like, this is what I've been missing. I'd done a lot of acting and directing at school and I'd always loved that kind of collective, collaborative sort of enterprise that takes place when you put a show together. And I guess I realised that maybe I was finding art a bit lonely. So um, this is the song. Uh, I'm going to play you a bit because I think it's useful in thinking about like what happened maybe and what I've kind of got stuck on, um, which is this relationship. Mm, it's quite quiet. So this is uh, called Music and the Mirror, and it's from uh, a chorus line, and it's pretty ropey quality, but we don't have to look at it for very long. Shall I try again? By showing me how to be Give me a job and you instantly get 
So, <clears throat> basically, like, um, something clicked listening to that. I guess that's how I was feeling. Like, that's what made sense to me at that point, I think, was uh, that um, art practice was some kind of um, song and dance, I guess. Um, and a kind of needy one as well, that, like, um, demanded attention and and specifically demanded an attention from an audience. And this is like, I'm not saying this is necessarily the case at all. And I think that like actually the adaptation that I made then is kind of like has had lots of very strange repercussions <laughs> throughout my art practice. Um, because that relationship is um, that, that kind of like, um, uh, like trying to think about art as a kind of performer song and dance kind of routine that is presented to an audience is quite a kind of um it's a it's a bit of a kind of sidestep i guess no pun intended but like it kind of it it kind of transposes art into something that's more theatrical and that's just kind of what made sense to me at the time and and kind of became the root of a lot of um, the work that i made throughout my education and then into into like being outside of the university. And the work was always in some ways about how, how performing, um, like the, 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 there's a, the, there was a kind of codependency, I guess, to the, to the performer and their relationship to an audience. And at this point I was actually making videos, I wasn't making live work, and that's really important, I think, because it was still kind of within within a kind of, ob like I suppose like a video is kind of like an object. Um, it, it wasn't kind of looking at the actual live encounter at that stage, it was very much thinking about this relationship in quite a formal way. Um, and, and I've kind of continued to look at that relationship. So this is a drawing from 2013, uh, like th uh, I think, uh, and it's called Between You and Me. And I was drawing, making this, this drawing as I was beginning to work on my first live work um, independently. So I also have a collaborative practice with Lucy and I'll talk about that in a bit. But this was, and I, so I'd made a couple of performances with Lucy at this stage, but this was the first work that I was making independently that was live. And, and I actually kind of set about making a full, well, it was not full length actually, that's a total lie. It was like, 45 minute musical with five songs with a cast of eight um, non-professional actors um, and I was doing that with a re uh, during a residency so we met over um, over six months we met every Sunday and I was writing in between and I was bringing songs to them and when I'm writing and making songs I write the lyrics and I work with composers and so that that even at that stage there's a kind of collaborative um, aspect to the work and and I think I'm like happiest when I'm kind of giving up some responsibility and delegating basically like I'm quite controlling and so <laughs> I like to choose people well and then trust them to bring um, something back that is um, you know what they yeah whatever they've done I kind of work with and there's a, something quite nice about that um, less lonely I get quite lonely I guess when I'm making things and and the moments where I um, come together with actors or performers are the bits that are the happiest I guess um, and finding happy ways to work I think is quite important um, so I'm going to show you a clip um, from um, between you and me it's just the last kind of um, section of the piece because it really um, I think it really sets up this um, this idea of moving between um, the theatrical contract between audience and performer and how that might help us understand interpersonal relationships. So this is the end of Between You and Me.
Yeah. Like, I think um, worth mentioning that when I present live work, I kind of rarely present them in spaces that are conventional theatrical spaces. So um, I'm really interested in thinking about how little is needed for this theatrical encounter to kind of be... Um, engaged I guess and so um, and I'll talk about that in a bit uh, as well but that yeah I'm I'm always like this is I guess a theatrical encounter right now and I'm kind of interested in uh, how that uh, how they are kind of formed and obviously when you have a group of people singing a group of people that aren't that's kind of theatrical but like um, yeah worth mentioning that um, and also I think that the reason I chose to show this is because it kind of sets up um, like that, that kind of metaphorical relationship, as I've mentioned, but also um, this idea of storytelling that is kind of something that is kind of in the work a lot. Um, so the songs are a big part of it and stories uh, and how they're shared are a big part of the work. And also like on a more basic level, just um, that we need each other. Uh, and how we need each other and how difficult uh, that can be sometimes, but how we do need each other so much as, um, you know, in order to sort of um, survive, I guess, or make life bearable and the complexities of that. And um, so I'm going to talk about um, another project that's a bit later than that. This is from, these drawings are all from 2016. And... Um, these this this body of work definitely kind of looks a lot more at the kind of um, that those complexities and the kind of uh, there's a thing called the porcupine dilemma, which is that um, well okay this is my version of it. Some I might be getting this wrong. I know that there's like other versions of this in like Freud and stuff, but this is my one of it, which is taken I think from Heidegger, but I'm not totally sure. Um, that basically it just talks, it's about uh, intimacy, I guess, and, it, and it's about how porcupines um, can need each other for warmth, but if they get too close, they prick each other. So that there's this kind of like um, push and pull between, um, um, well, how much we need each other and how much we hurt each other, I guess. And um, so this body of work was very much looking at how uh, codependencies develop, um, again, uh, kind of like still coming back to that chorus line neediness and, um, and, and I guess like trying to find a balance within that porcupine dilemma. So I was looking and, and I kind of included a lot of these drawings to show you maybe how I build a work from scratch. So I kind of like started, um, making drawings of, um, uh, sort of like sexual role plays that involved um, like this is trampling so the person underneath like gets sexual pleasure from someone like standing on them and so that there's a sense of being used but also using the person so there's a kind of circular uh, kind of um, mutually beneficial relationship happening and this thing about mutually beneficial relationships became interesting to me um, <coughs> Uh, this one is like less clear, but it's kind of um, maybe uh, what they call aftercare, which is like what happens after um, a kind of BDSM session where you kind of come back to reality. And also alongside that, I was really interested in thinking about um, massage classes because it was a kind of um, a similar situation where you are volunteering to your body to be used, but the use is also like beneficial to you, basically. If you're having like massage, trainee massage therapists massaging you, you get a massage. So it seemed like quite a basic kind of way of thinking about that mutually beneficial relationship. And so um, with this work, I, I, I then wrote um, a song, which you'll hear in a minute, um, with um, another artist called Alec Konecker. And and actually the song was quite kind of like um, like sort of faha. Um, what am I trying to say? You could move the song around quite a lot. It wasn't too conventional. It had two bits that could be moved around. 
So um, it was quite a flexible song. And then <clears throat> I actually wrote a play and I, I cast it and rehearsed it in the only way I know how, which may or may not look like normal rehearsals, and built a set in a studio and, and presented it as a play first. But then after presenting it as a play, I used the set to film a, um, a video which used the same text as the play or some of the same text, but um, kind of re, uh, re like kind of renegotiated it um, into a film, and that um, the relationship between film and and perform or video and performance in my work is like something that I'm kind of constantly trying to work out, and actually I'm I've kind of agonised over it at times, and and sometimes and then I kind of get over it because actually like my writing that I do is always kind of for performance and I've kind of started to think about it more like songwriting I guess because songs are sung, they're recorded and they're performed live and there's actually quite a kind of fluid relationship between those two things um, and so I'm, I'm kind of like trying to develop throughout all of this work a kind of more fluid relationship between live and recorded performance and actually it's much more useful to think about it like music than it is to think about it like I think people get very wound up about like performance and performance documentation and like where the where the work is and actually um, making different iterations of it that kind of function in different ways um, I've found to be quite um, lively I guess and um, yeah and also then you kind of like start to realize what mediums what you know like what what you can do with different mediums and I mean on a really basic level like with video you can get closer and with theater or with something that's theatrical there's distance and both of those things have um, like benefits so I'm going to show you this video this video is actually like 15 minutes long um, and I'm like really um, maybe not going to show all of it actually but maybe I will what do you think I'm going to show all of it mm. it's called pressure Me, she'd be talking to herself. Oh, oh listen to me, I've done it again. Sorry. I don't mind. They're taking the time this week, aren't they? Could we do the lie down? Keeps me balanced. Okay, we're ready for the volunteers now. That's right. Bring it here to me. to be needed. Bumping, bumping, bumping. You can get unraveling the fibres attached when people try to help you. It's pretty tense, so I'm going to use my thumb. Thumb doesn't do the work. Of course. It's my arm. There are times when you feel like you're being used. Now to the top of the table. I'm going to work on the lower back. But I'll take that over being in someone's debt any day. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Stretching out the lower back. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Hi. Just move those things off there and take a seat. Now 
I look how I'm using my body. My hands do the work. Nothing above my waist is working. I'm using the weight of my body to go back and forth. My hands are my tools. You can do this all day. Now we're going to run through that sequence with music. I do need someone to have my back after all. So, here is a pelvis, here is an indentation, and there is the piriformis. So watch this. Place your elbow into the indentation, very slowly, very gently. And gently move down the leg, raise the ankle, bring it up, and then gently move it backwards and forwards.
Okay. on to balance with like here there's no distinction between who's using who we're giving and receiving at the same time we're finding our balance harder sometimes. And then there's you. If it wasn't for you, I'd be talking to myself. And you'd look strange too, sitting there in the dark. If we both move a little bit closer, we could touch. But that's complicated. Maybe this is balanced enough for now. People are just people trying to balance other people. Other people need somebody who needs somebody to use their body it's hard to stay balance each day some games you play go more one way balance me are just people Feel trying to balance the weight of other my people body.
So, um, so um, yeah, as I said, that was also performed as a um, play. So this is the set, and these are st um, sort of production shots from the um, from the play. So the play was um, three separate scenes that were kind of um, played out between the couple, uh, the kind of the, the role play, it was after the role play, and then there were musical interludes with the song, um, and then the scene in the office um, going into the scene in the massage um, class. So, um, I guess um, I'm showing you this to kind of um, kind of show you that kind of draw, like maybe kind of present some of that fluidity that I was talking about. That, that, that there's a, like different renditions of the same set of kind of research, I guess, um, and that the kind of um, and, and actually like in in this work because because it kind of really sets up that thing again of. Um, interpersonal relationships and um, performer and audience relationships kind of being useful as a metaphor for each other um, that was kind of like really um, investigated further by the switching like the kind of two different mediums I guess and the distance and the proximity the distance of um, live work and the proximity of a video um, and also, um, I mean, I haven't watched that film for a long time, and it's pr quite sad, actually. Uh, like, it's quite, um, it's quite, uh, I think that one of the things that, like, uh, comes up a lot, or when I'm thinking about my work, and particularly my work in relation to my collaborative practice, so my independent practice in relation to my collaborative practice, I, um, I think that um, the work that I make on my own is definitely about individuals within groups and the work that I make with Lucy, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, is definitely about um, maintaining relationships and the difficulty of that. And so in some ways the kind of making process is reflected in the work itself as well. Um, this is a poster for uh, the play. and. Um, so often the drawings that I make, I kind of turn into posters as well. And the posters are um, one way I use to kind of um, set up that kind of theatrical contract, I guess. It's like a really simple thing, but actually like an act of theatre probably involves people being in the same room at the same time. Um, and that needs to be announced, I guess. And, and it's a very simple thing, but it kind of like announces, um, it kind of formalises the the uh, interaction I guess and so that's something that I've done quite a lot um, and um, so before I talk about Lucy's work I wanted to kind of talk about this thing about um, theatricality and performance and my interest in it and and um, and I think that one of the things like when I've thought about this I think one of the things that kind of comes up is this like growing up gay being a kind of um, like knowing that 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 there is a kind of um, like theatricality in everyday life I'm going to introduce that now so that it's it's not um, I'll talk about this in a minute just like that's a placeholder a thematic placeholder but that um, I'm the work is often about where, th where theatrical action happens in everyday life or where performance happens and particularly where like performance wh where normativity or normality is is a kind of set of constructs or performances and I think that in some ways that has been something that I've been aware of s like since since I was young I guess and that I think when you know that you have a secret that someone that you can't tell I guess you become very aware that other people have secrets too and that there's a kind of um, a front stage and a backstage to everyone's kind of public personas. Um, and I think that that's been a, is a big preoccupation in the work. And, and then, so, so it, that was kind of already there. Um, and then I discovered these two theorists, um, Irvin Goffman, who wrote The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life, which is a kind of... A soci uh, like a, a soci sociological uh, study of where performance operates in in kind of uh, public ritual um, 
and and that's really like it's it's kind of it's definitely written by a white man in the fifties, but it's really um, it has some very interesting things about the kind of um, how stigma develops, I guess, um, within norm normality, and and Judith Butler, um, who kind of extends some of it and and talks about gender as a performance, but also just how like power and fear and stigma are used to um, re, re, uh, repeat social standards and, and um, enforce normality or norm, social norms. And I think that those, um, those tensions uh, the, uh, within the performance in everyday life, the kind of, um, the, kind of uh, the, violent, the quiet violence of normality is definitely something that is kind of underpinning a lot of the more recent work. Um, that, that actually there are roles that we're asked to play that we don't necessarily fit into and the friction as we try and fit into them causes, um, that is, is quite a violent thing, I guess. And, um, and that's something that I think is, has been there throughout my life growing up. Um, queer, I, I guess. So, um, so uh, this um, is a work that me and Lucy made, um, and that def this definitely kind of um, quite sort of directly addresses the um, the violence of um, being normal, I guess, and you'll see why. It's called Together, by the way. Together Forever, actually, it's called. Let's play that back.
put that together.
so that's kind of the end of the work. They do get up and like, that's you know, not the end of the video. But um, so um, just talk a little bit about how like Lucy and I work. I guess um, we kind of developed this way of building choreography, which is very much um, like sort of based on the sound that uh, the, or like. It's not not just sound actually, but like we basically build movement from um, pre-existing um, techniques. So here there's foley technique, which is the sound of um, which is the kind of making of sound effects. For it's actually from cinema, uh, which is what they do at the beginning. Um, so their movement at the beginning is totally dictated by where the radio mic is positioned in relation to the sound that they're producing. And and then in the second part of the piece. Um, we are using like stage combat techniques and so we would uh, Lucy and I would kind of develop um, the choreography from trying things out and putting them on a timeline um, like digitally you know like with an editing software and develop the kind of soundscape and then the movement would kind of be built up around the mo like the dance would basically be developed out of what it what you need where you need to be at a certain time to make something happen basically um, so that's really like formally how it was built. <clears throat> and then we would kind of like, from that kind of formal kind of trick, I guess, um, gimmick, we would kind of flesh out a scenario where this, and often the scenarios would, that were, were about violence happening in, in moments where violence uh, maybe is being suppressed or passive aggression is sort of like, I guess that actually like what these works are about, essentially a passive aggression as a mode of interacting. Um, and this was um, a work that we made for an exhibition at Tate Britain. Um, and the exhibition lasted for about three months. And during the week, the, the video, which is called Together Forever and is a loop, um, was projected in the space and the space um, had a um, the sort of sound set up ready for the weekend performances so there were live performances every weekend with the same cast and there was a um, kind of um, hired um, uh, or like you know sort of like raked seating and you can see that the sort of um, the sound set up for the weekend was already always there so it could be trans the, the space could be transformed very quickly and the lights came on at certain times to um, allow the actors to perform in the space. And they, they performed uh, three times, maybe at the weekend, on Saturdays for three months. I'm not going to talk about that now. Um, so I'm just going to end with um, just to like maybe just... Um, well, maybe I wanted to talk a little bit about this um, and because it moves into it. Just this idea of... Um, coming back to this idea of normativity being so, or social standards being something that are are kind of reproduced through learning and repeating and reperforming and i think both both song and dance have this quality of being something that you you can um, you learn and you sing together a song is something that you learn maybe and you sing together and you repeat and you perfect and a dance has the same quality and and that there is a sort of there's a potential for that thing to go two ways that actually it, it can be an act of um collaboration and uh, it can affirm that there's something beyond the limits of your own body um when you're with other people singing that there's something that some like that can only happen to, to collectively and that is quite transcendent i guess like genuinely and and then there's this other thing that can happen which is cor like corrosive to um authenticity or or uh, corrosive to uh, self-esteem which is that you you sing and repeat something that doesn't necessarily uh, that you don't necessarily want to, you get get stuck in your head when you don't necessarily want it to, right? Um, and that 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 can uh, whatever. So basically, that's what I'm saying is that a song is something that um, can be two things, I guess. And that that kind of dichotomy is something that I um, kind of return to again and again. And there's always learning and repeating in the work. There's always some kind of process of learning. Um, 
in uh, in in the class at the beginning there is a there's um a, it's a pottery class and then there's a massage class and then the work that me and Lucy make together there's a sort of um, a therapeutic game that comes from that that is like developed out of re repetition um, and also in all of these things the audience is is kind of invited to become a, almost like a therapeutic component to these exercises that that actually like particularly with me like mine and Lucy's work because the the um, the amplification of the sound is something that is shared with the audience the audience is kind of like inadvertently cast as a part of the part of the therapeutic game and i think the same is true of the way that the actors talk to the audience like in the film the woman is using the viewer as a way to complete her system her logic her um her therapeutic game i guess um so <clears throat> um this is a painting i've got like another clip but maybe i shouldn't show it or shall i show it it's nice it's a nice one it's an uplifting one because i think they've all been quite gloomy um but that's just my work so um so uh, yeah, so this is a drawing um, that I made 2017 when um, I started writing a play um, set in a gay man's choir. Um, and these two works that I'm about to talk about now quite briefly um, definitely are that dichotomy. Uh, one of them is set in a gay man's choir and the song is the backdrop for the work and they learn the song and as they learn the song they also share their experience of alienation and so that there is a sort of um there's the collectivity of the singing set against the kind of stories of of alienation which you'll see in a second um and then also just the work that i've made for the exhibition at migros migros at the moment um which kind of uses singing um as a way to present something that's kind of maybe more trapping and repetitive and and less fun. So, uh, this is called I Woke Up This Morning. Here's some more posters. Uh, this is a work that I... Uh, this video is um, pretty ropey, actually. I haven't, like, done the sound on it or anything, but um, so you're actually the first people to see this video publicly, but it's really not that special. It's literally a single shot. Um, so this is the last sort of uh, section of the play. Um where they sing the song. And it's a nice song, so I feel like it'll be uplifting. <laughs> oh, no, that's it performed somewhere else. Here we are. You two come from each drink after? I don't drink. I'll get you a Coke. Happy ending? I haven't had that for ages. Oh, that's the first time. I think they're turning into a pint. There'll be no glass left. There's no one left to go out dancing. Well, no one goes out dancing anymore anyway. They're taking the fun out of everything. Well, they can't gentrify this. You can't actually. Ow. Do you think? Oh. Trust me, there's lots of people having fun. You just have to use your phone to find them. Do you have an actual fun, though? Was happy endings always fun? Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Dancing all night till midday the next day. Looking for anyone to take home. Strangers in the night. And then the walk of shame. Shame.
sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong.
So, um, I think maybe, um, like, I did have these to talk about, but actually, I think not, um, because it's kind of quite long now. But um, what I will say, just to end, is that, like, um, just to kind of, like, circle back to that chorus line thing at the beginning and talk about that kind of... Um, that neediness that I was mentioning and that kind of like codependence between a performer and an audience. Um, it's like, it's something that isn't necessarily like sustainable as a way of making. And uh, because it, 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 it's too, um, there's always something missing, I guess, which is the audience when you're making. And I think that um, more recently and actually just watching that back, I find it like, I. Um, I actually find it quite moving to watch those men because I had such a nice time working with them. And something that I'm really trying to develop now is um, is that, it, that, that the relationships happen in the making process, uh, which has always been the case, but there's always I've always had an eye on something else or a, a kind of fear, I guess. Um, and that more recently, like I kind of like, there's something about like that work to me is very important and um, yeah, I feel a bit emotional actually, but um, like there's been a, 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 a sort of attempt to unpack, I guess, that kind of um, chorus line codependence, let's call it. And um, and uh, yeah, and uh, that's where I am now, I guess. And um, this is the uh, information which you can barely see on this poster actually, um, but that's because um, it looks nice um, uh, for the performance um, this weekend and you can see Valerie who's in the room making some lovely letters um, okay I'll leave it there thank you No, I have one question actually. Um, so you spoke a lot about the relationship, theater, art. In a, many of your works, choreography is an important part. Mm. Uh, as an expert, I can mm. locate this choreography quite well. But how is your relationship to dance? To what kind of dance do you relate, etc.? Mm. Maybe you could. Yeah, um, I guess that like. Um, hmm. It's a good question. Like, I like dance. <laughs> um, but, like, I find... Um, I think that, like, with mine and Lucy's work, um, like, as I mentioned, the kind of... the choreographic principle that we developed was definitely, um, like I said, the one that is kind of like a functional one. And I think that the movement is always, like... Um, like, it's always, like, functioning in some way, I guess, because the idea for me of movement that is expressive, I find a little bit awkward in the same way that I find, like, calling myself, like, a theatre maker awkward because I'm always coming from a place of, like, not knowing, I guess, and, and it's always has that kind of, like... Um, me and Lucy often say that we feel like we're two best friends, like, at the age of five, like, at my parents' house making something up, and I think that it definitely has that quality, but then you know, on a, on a more sort of like, you know, art historical level, the thing that me and the person that me and Lucy look at, looked at a lot, or the two people that me and Lucy look, looked at a lot were Yvonne Rayner and Pina Bausch. And I guess Yvonne Rayner is, is, a, is someone who really developed a choreographic principle based on functionality and looking at what the body could do. And I think that definitely mine and Lucy's work is born out of that. And then maybe um, the thing that Pina, that attracts me about Pina Bausch, I guess, is um, the kind of the way that she kind of uses or kind of presents body like actors and performers um, in motion in scenarios that are kind of almost something but aren't totally, and that they kind of like um, I guess that her kind of like hybrid like hybrid dance theatre is kind of like maybe the kind of thing that interests me about her and the fact that she's like. You know, maybe I'm like art theatre. <laughs> That's, yeah, cute. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, if there are no questions, there are no questions. That's absolutely fine. Let's have a drink. 
Thanks for joining us tonight, and it goes on, I think in two weeks is the next one. So we'll see each other on the 21st of November. Then it's art and fashion. Mm. Yay! <laughs> Thank you! Thank you. Thank you.